Hello, friends. I hope you're doing well. I'm okay. I've been better. Just, I'd ask that you would just give me a little line here and be patient with my rant today. I do rant a little bit. I have some emotion about the way things are in the world. I'm not a machine. I can't just totally detach. But uh, I bring it back around towards the middle and towards the, from the middle to the end. So maybe just be patient with me. If you don't agree, of course, with my politics, don't stop listening. I really don't have any politics, to be perfectly honest. I'm, uh, I'm not ideological at all. I'm just observing what I see from the perspective of doing the work, the hard work of becoming a full conscious human being. And that's all that I'm talking about right now in this series. So be patient with me. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> and uh, thanks for stopping by. All right. With that, let's get started. I want to read um, a short interview from the movie Matter of Heart. Directed and edited and produced by Mark Whitney. Conceived and written by Suzanne Wagner. Executive producer George Wagner. This is a, uh, I believe it's from the 50s. Um, they also interviewed Marie-Louise von Franz, who was a peer or co-worker uh, uh, with, with Young. All right, I'll start this out. Young, the world hangs on a thin thread, and that is the psyche of man. Nowadays, we are not threatened by elementary catastrophes. There's no such thing in nature as an H-bomb. That is all man's doing. We are the great danger. The psyche is the great danger. What if something goes wrong with the psyche? You see, and so it is demonstrated to us in our days, what the power of the psyche is of man, how important it is to know something about it, but we know nothing about it. Nobody would give credit to the idea that the psychical processes of the ordinary man have any importance whatever. One thinks, oh, he has just what he has in his head. He's all from his surroundings. He's taught such and such a thing, believes such and such a thing, and particularly if he is well housed and well fed, then he has no ideas at all. And that's the great mistake because he is just that as which he is born, and he is not born as tabula rasa, but as a reality. Young had a vision at the end of his life, the interviewer says. Interviewer, Young had a vision at the end of his life of a catastrophe. It was a world catastrophe. Marie-Louise von Franz. I don't want to speak much about it. One of his daughters took notes and after his death gave it to me. And there is a drawing with a line going up and down. And beneath and underneath is the last 50 years of humanity. And some remarks about a final catastrophe being ahead. But I have only those notes. Interviewer. What is your feeling about the world situation? Von Franz. Well... One's whole feeling revolts against this idea, but since I have those notes in a drawer, I don't allow myself to be too optimistic. I think, well, we've always had wars and enormous catastrophes, and I have no personal fear much about that. I mean, at my age, if you have any how soon to go, so or so egocentrically spoken. But the beauty of all life, to think that the billions and billions and billions of years of evolution to build up the plants and the animals and the whole beauty of nature, and that man would go out of sheer shadow foolishness and destroy it all. I mean that all life might go from the planet. And we don't know on Mars and Venus, there is no life. We don't know if there is any life experiment elsewhere in the galaxies. And we go and destroy this? I think it is so abominable. I try to pray that it may not happen, that a miracle happens. Interviewer, do you find that young people that you see now are aware of that, that, it, that this is in their consciousness? Von Franz, yes, it's partly in their unconscious and partly in their consciousness. And I think in a very dangerous way, namely in a way of giving up and running away into a fantasy world. You know, when you study science fiction, you see there's always the fantasy of escaping to some other planet to begin anew again, which means to give up the battle here on Earth. Consider, they consider it hopeless and give up. I think one shouldn't give up because if you think of Young's book, Answer to Job, if man would wrestle with God, if man would tell God that he shouldn't do it, if we would reflect more, that's why reflection come, that's where reflection comes in. 
Young never thought that we might do better than just possibly sneak around the corner with not too big a catastrophe. When I saw him last, he had also a vision while I was with him. But there he said, I see enormous stretches devastated, enormous stretches of the earth. But thank God it's not the whole planet. I think that if not more people try to reflect and take back their projections and take the opposites within themselves, there will be a total destruction. Yeah. I'll tell you, I feel, I feel impending doom. I'm not a prognosticator of the future. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I believe in science. I don't go about believing in snake oil. I don't go about listening to or believing cons, con men and grifters. But the world right now is being run by them. Everywhere you look, all over our social media, you have one grifter after another feeding their stream of bullshit directly into the ears of the young and they take it in without a thought. They jump from stream to stream to stream without any self-reflection, without any thought. And what do you see? You just see people lashing out at each other. You see young men laughing about destroying the country. They snicker at the burning. If that doesn't show you how close we are to, to total destruction, I don't know what does. Because I heard somebody say today, some fight promoter or some horribly violent man talking on the internet that men love to watch, by the way. They love violence. They love to watch it. And um, the, the, the younger generations, and I know I sound really old and, and, and uh, cra you know, craggly saying that, but my God, how they, how they idolize violence. And he said, oh, have you felt the weight of everything? It, it's just lifted off of me. I feel so, you know, hopeful now. Oh, really? Well, more than half the country doesn't agree. And then you're going to have this half come in and try to decimate the government without working together? That kind of rapid change is going to create such anger Imagine if all of the false threats that the right made about taking away your guns and religion, imagine that the Democrats actually did it. They didn't do that. I'm not trying to, there is no equivalency between the Democrats and the conservatives right now. The conservatives, in my opinion, are the most dangerous human beings on the planet earth right now. And they're in league with every other right wing conservative nutcase leader that's out there. And I'm telling you, the world is looking pretty bleak. Look at how the young distract themselves with games. Look at how they distract themselves with sports. <sighs> the thing is, until one feels to come to the work, they can't. And Gurdjieff, you know, Young said, what did he, he said that nobody, um, he said that nobody understands Humanity. Nobody knows psych the psyche. I have to disagree. I have to disagree. Gurdjieff, as one example, just one, you know, one of, I think, several, one example does know the human psyche and does know himself. The psyche is the great danger. We are the great danger. Us. They've just escalated the war in Ukraine. Parting shot from Biden told Zelensky, go ahead, shoot, shoot your long range missiles into Russia. Oh, man. And we are very, very sick right now. And you have a lot of people that don't know how to think clearly that have horrible ideas. Our smartest are the stupidest. So it's not all kumbaya over here. No, it's not. This is urgent. This There is an urgency to this work. And only a few I know will ever do it. <sighs> well, um, I have to agree with Miss, uh, Mrs. Von Franz. I pray that it doesn't happen. I pray that we that we realize a miracle. And if you think Trump is that miracle, 
If you think any leader is a miracle, you are sadly mistaken. That's not the miracle. The miracle happens within ourselves. The miracle happens within each person. And I, it's, I would hate to see that we have so that many would have to pass away and that the catastrophe would have to happen in order for a remnant to come to know themselves like that. It doesn't have to be that way. I know that we're heading in that direction. We, there's yet still beauty in the world. It lives in thee. It lives in me. We are keepers of a flame. Those of us who have awoken to the reality that I, that we are the monsters and we're trying to do something about it. We're doing our work to deal with it. And we, and there is beauty and it's beautiful. The whole process in a way is, is very poetic and beautiful, but it's also so hard, like ripping your flesh off of your bone. I don't, I'm not focused externally right now on who the best politician would be or how to mobilize and get thus and thus elected or, you know, that's not my focus. I feel the, the hardest work is the, is the best work and the best work is the hardest work. And it's, it's rooting out within each of us that we, ha it's something that each of us has to do. We have to root out within each of us what doesn't serve and and we need to make peace with the monsters just was saying a uh, a title of a news article russia wants to wipe ukraine off the map because it dared challenge the dictator's power so he had to save face boy what a mess that is and then today Zelensky said Today, there's much talk in the media about us receiving approval for corresponding actions, but strikes are not carried out with words. Such things are not announced. Missiles will speak for themselves. Certainly. Glory to Ukraine. Oh, boy. One needs to know the context in which they exist. One needs to do their best to try to situate themselves and understand themselves and understand others. When one does this work and goes through the process, they can see clearer what's happening in the world. It is of utmost importance that each of us does what we can within ourselves in these trying times. Yes, I have emotion about it. I'm also an identity and a human being, and I have a vested interest in wanting to see things go as well as they can. Now, looking at it from, looking at things from the perspective of the work, we realize that most people the majority, maybe even, you know, 98, 99% of people are driven by unconscious habits, desires, and external influences, right? Politics is a reflection of that mechanical state. In individuals and, and countries, they're acting without awareness or without true understanding. And that's what got us into all those wars in the 20th century. And guess what? And America and Russia are expert at this. Political systems and countries, they exploit, pe they exploit people's mechanical tendencies. They use propaganda, they use ideologies, and they use emotional appeals to control you. This really is a benefit of the work. I'm telling you now, you will become unbreakable. And I'm telling you also that you will be able to resist every lie that's thrown at you you'll just sniff it out immediately not think this is and i'm not speaking from the point from the place of of uh i'm not speaking from a place of uh arrogance or that i'm better or that folks that are awake have awakened and done the work are better or involved in the work are better the priorities just realign 
things become clear. You walk, it is as if you walk out of a mist. You don't even know how, where you were. You don't even know how you were in that mist a moment before, but now you've walked out of it and things just pop. You smell, you see, you feel. And when you see others being manipulated and controlled, sure, it's frustrating. It is. And I, I, was, I shared some of my frustration today and my apologies if I was a little too emphatic, but it is that urgent in my opinion. And I feel that in myself, just as Carl Jung tried to do before he died. So you need to distrust any ideology, in my opinion. You, after the involved being involved in the work, you see through and past all ideologies, political ideologies, left wing, right wing, center, batshit crazy. Those are distractions from the work. Ideologies simplify the complexity of human existence, and they're wielded as tools of a manipulation. Political movements that are that promise to change often to change things, they result in superficial transformations because they don't address the deeper inner aspects of human nature. There is a deeper problem, an illness that goes down to the marrow of our bone in this age. And it's, it's human nature too. This is natural human nature that we're struggling with. The beast, the minotaur in the labyrinth. He's pissed. That minotaur is on a rampage. And he's not going to stop until he's gotten all that anger out of him. So a politics of anger is always going to lead to war. Always. Always. So what to do? What do we do? You must take an account of yourself. You must do your personal work. You must. That's the foundation for the change that's needed in the world. Without people waking up to their true potential and freeing themselves from mechanical behavior, these political systems are going to remain inherently flawed and they're going to continue to hurt a lot of people. We were, I thought the West was a, was Christian. You have Catholicism, you have Christianity. We as a, we, we have risen against the other, the immigrant and made them the scapegoat which is what we do. We scapegoat. We have to scapegoat somebody. We scapegoat these poor people that need our, that need our love, that need our care. And you need your love. You need your own love most. So a truly awakened society could, can't only arise when the collect, when the individuals collectively transcend their unconscious states, this is our only hope. And Carl Jung knew that and spoke of that all of his life. And I deeply resonate with his message. The work is about transcending your unconscious state, not transcending into heaven and leaving the earth. No, you will fall in love with the ground. You will fall in love with the earth. You will fall in love with with yourself and you'll fall in love with those around you. And unless we do transcend these unconscious states, I have to say, Carl Jung's warning will come to pass without a doubt, no question. And to look at it from the bottom of the mountain, it seems impossible. I pray to the sky, I pray to the earth. But I'm telling you, I will pray and I am praying every day. I say my prayers at night before I go to bed. I pray for my parents. I pray one, you know, even though they're dead, one of them's dead. I pray for my, I pray for others, where what's ever on my heart, for my wife, for my, you know, my family, my friends, what I see in the world. And I pray and ask for myself. And my only prayer for myself has been, what does love require of me? 
that's all I can come to ask for myself. What does love require of me? And my prayer will be will continue to be that others find that love within themselves and they ask the same question, what does love require of me? Free of ideology, free of politics, free of tradition, free of religion, a heartfelt cry. What can I do for love? What does love require of, of me? It's hard. The energy is just so, there is so much turmoil. When people don't feel well, they treat others very badly, or they can treat others very badly. Impatient, quick to anger, irritable. When two people are feeling that way, it's war. <sighs> It's kind of crazy. Out of nowhere. Could have peace. Normal moment. Next moment. War. <laughs> Triggers. Triggered. So as above, so below. <laughs> those conflicts out in the world, they don't... My home is not free of those conflicts. They come. So what can you do? You got to be quick to forgive. And you always have to love. So... Political leaders are caught in the same trap. This mechanicalness, this unconsciousness. They can't give you any real guidance or solutions. We don't have any Marcus Aurelius is around. They're around, but they aren't, they aren't anywhere close to leadership. You know why? Look at the oil and gas industry, 10th largest, one of the one of the largest, uh, I think top 10 industries in the world. They make trillions of dollars a year. You think they're going to let go? No. And then all the industries above them depend on the, the on oil and gas. You think that's just going to magically go away? No, it's not. It's not. So if you want to know who the, the, the powerful serve, they serve those interests. That's just the reality of our world. It's not... It's just a statement. I mean, we are not a republic. We are not a democracy. We are an oligarchy. And there's an oligarchy that exists across the world. And that oligarchy is uniting or was always united, but now it's publicly coming out how united they are. So you need to be very cynical towards authority. I mean, I'm, I'm basically an anarchist. <laughs> so you can't just be happy-go-lucky. That's just not going to get it done. You can't just go through the motions and act like, oh, you know, this is bliss, 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 bliss. This is not bliss, 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 bliss. But in the middle of the fire, you can find that. So we do. We need to be cynical of our the authorities in our lives. We need to hold them to account. We need to start by holding ourselves to account. One thing that happened in the United States is the religious organizations have common interests. Opus Dei, very radical sects of Catholicism and fundamentalist Christians and Israel have kind of made a an unholy trinity. They're not going to take it anymore. They're not taking this liberalism anymore. They're not taking gay marriage. They're not taking abortion. They're not taking the left's nonsense. So it, it what's happening in the world right now only exemplifies, I believe, what I'm saying. You you have to be become very cynical and skeptical and uh towards towards these leaders. Anyway. As far as the work goes, politics is a low order concern, unless the world's about to explode. <laughs> there is a book I would recommend called Nuclear War by Annie Djokovic. Um, that'll put you, that'll, that'll sober you right up. That's quite a, it's basically the last hour on earth. The book traces the last hour on, on, on earth. So 
in the utter, in the worst chaos is the opportunity, I think, for the greatest growth. <laughs> so this may all be playing out in that way, in a positive direction. Waking up, finding harmony within yourself and balance, becoming self-aware. In my opinion, these are the most important things in life, not political arguments and struggles. But see something, say something. So you sh we should all speak up for sure. We can't dismiss politics, but it... And it's certainly not key to the work. Well, it's it's the environment in which the work occurs in. And God knows we've been, you know, the last hundred years, we've been through horrible change, very difficult change. Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people killed in wars. Many more millions killed from starvation and from apathy and... You know, if you looked at it, yeah, it, you want to, why are people depressed? Why are they struggling? Because in the backdrop of everything, that sits over them. And so our society tries to take their mind off it. Our culture is f shaped to try to, you know, mold and shape your opinion and take your mind off of the horror that we've lived through and the horror that's playing out right now before our eyes. And we haven't even gotten to the fun part where we start fighting over resources. Well, we already are fighting over resources, but when those resources really begin to fail us, that's when we really, that's when we really, um, we're really in trouble. And, you know, once upon a time, Elon Musk saw that and spoke of that. Then he went all in on politics, thinking perhaps in his way, he's trying to help. He's not. So anyway, only those who have achieved self-mastery and consciousness and have awoken to their consciousness can make any kind of meaningful contribution in society, including politics. So let's avoid the extremes, observe political phenomena with detachment. But as I've just demonstrated, it's not impossible to be detached. There are emotional reactions still. I'm not fully detached from from the political phenomena. I'll tell you that. <sighs> I'm working on it. This is why we're doing our work. This is why I'm doing my work. <laughs> I am not some fully formed guru master. I never claim such. I'll, you know, and, and the work will never stop. I mean, all we can do is the best we can, right? So I certainly am not, uh, you know, the work does not, in my opinion, dismiss per participation in political life. If it's done with awareness and intention and from and by conscious beings, free from emotional reactivity or ideological fixation, I believe we are in a state of maximum uncertainty. Ironically, that's the best place to be to do the work. So I will do my best to remember that and to do my best to, to remain detached from what's happening. But this uncertainty will, will wear you down. It will wear you down. So that's the work is really the only thing that can help you to really balance the scales and to keep it at bay. And what is all this about? Humans are struggling to become conscious. They know they're missing something. They know the world is off kilter. They don't know quite what to do. They don't know what to do. But every ideology out there throws them a, lot, a rope and they grab it because they're drowning. Political chaos is, all, is just a symptom of, of humanity's broader spiritual failing and their lack of self-awareness. They're trying to drag people back to traditional religions. No, mm -mm. it's not going to work. Christianity's dying. There's a reason. And all the tantrums in the world that they want to throw, it's not going to bring it back. And there isn't, re there isn't really anything to bring back. I mean, ideology is ideology. You don't, we don't go back to an earlier ideology and think it's going to be a better one. We need to transcend these. But that's going to happen individually hundreds of years, thousands of years before it will happen probably in our culture. I would think hundreds of years, but... 
So, all right. I've been ranting. My apologies. So, uh, I wish you well. And remember me and everyone else in your prayers. And uh, adieu. <laughs>